Hey folks, Ezra here for the Rideshare Guy. So I'm sure you've heard about the upcoming new features to the Uber driver app for drivers in California. One of which is the ability to see the passenger's destination before accepting a trip. So I actually have access to that feature in my app right now. I went out and I did a bunch of rides with it and I wanna share with you my experience with that and some things that I like about it and some things that I don't like as much about it. So yes, it's true, Uber drivers in California will soon be able to see the passenger's destination before accepting a trip. And they'll also be able to see other information like the estimated earnings for a trip. And this is part of a suite of updates to the Uber driver app for California drivers. Jay actually covered um, these updates in depth in another video. So be sure to go ahead and check out that video if you haven't already. Now, about 30% of California drivers already have access to some or all these features. I can now see my passenger's destinations in the app before I accept a trip. And the remaining drivers in California should get access to these features within the next 30 days or so. And then these features might expand to other states as well. So even if you're not a California driver, it would probably benefit you to pay attention to what's going on here because you might be seeing these updates yourself pretty soon. So in my Uber driver app, when I get a ride request now, it looks like this. I can see the type of ride, obviously Uber X in this example. I can see the passenger rating 4.83, the surge amount plus $6. On the map, I can see the estimated time to the pickup, which is two minutes. And then back down below, I can see the estimated time of the ride, seven minutes and length of the ride, 1.5 miles. And then obviously the pickup um, intersection and the drop off intersection. So for me, the most important part of this update is that I can really now have a lot of control over where and when I drive. Um, you know, for years, Uber has been claiming that drivers can drive where and when they want, but we all know that's not really true. You can turn on your app where you want, but where you might end up is anybody's guess in a city like Los Angeles, where I've driven for um, over five years, you know, you might get a ride that takes you an hour away. And if you want to get back to where you were because of traffic, it might take you two hours to get back. So knowing the passenger's destination before you accept a trip, that does give the driver a lot more control over where and when you'll be driving. And uh, I do really like that. Another thing I like about this update is that I won't have to ever again drive really far to pick someone up only to find out they're just taking a really short ride. Now, most drivers, myself included, just avoid long pickups altogether now because we've all been there. We've all experienced the disappointment of driving really far to pick someone up and then it's just a short ride. So with this information, we can make a much better and more informed decision. You know, maybe you will want to drive far to pick somebody up because you know they're taking a long ride. And then if you see a ride that's really short after a long pickup, you'll know immediately not to take it. Another thing I like is that this feature allows drivers to avoid deadheading and deadheading is those dead miles. Maybe you get a trip to a remote location and after you drop off that passenger, there's no requests in the area. So you have to drive a bunch of dead miles where you're not getting paid to get to an area with more requests, or maybe you have to be somewhere at a certain time. So um, you ended up taking a long trip. You didn't know it was going to be long, but that's what you got stuck with. And then you have to drive a bunch of dead miles to get back to wherever you need to be. Well, this kind of eliminates those situations because now, since you know your destinations, you'll know um, exactly where you're going to end up and you can just avoid those trips that require a lot of deadhead miles altogether. And going along with that idea, when I can avoid dead miles, that means I'm making a lot more money per mile I'm driving and I'm also keeping my expenses down at the same time. So I definitely like that. Another thing I like about this new feature is it allows me to avoid traffic. You know, here in Los Angeles, a two mile ride could take you three minutes or it could take you 45 minutes in some situations. And we all know that the miles driven pay a lot more than the time that you're sitting in traffic. So. It's really important to avoid traffic if you're trying to maximize your earnings and knowing where the destination is. And if you know the traffic patterns in your city, it allows you to really make the most of that information and avoid traffic so that you can maximize your earnings. Knowing your passenger's destination is actually a destination filter of its own. If you think about it, you know, obviously the Uber app has the feature that allows you to set a destination filter 
Um, but that kind of just sends you in a general direction. It doesn't give you as much control over the rides that you're taking. One thing I really don't like about the destination filter in the Uber driver app is that say it's the end of a long night and I kind of want to just get home, it's slowing down, but you know, I figure if there's any rides along the way, I'll take them. Well, in that situation in LA, I'm usually gonna be kind of just driving slowly along a surface street and not taking a freeway. Um, but the destination filter, if I plug that in on the Uber app, it'll always just route me along a freeway. And the problem with that in LA is that there's a ton of other drivers on the freeway, so you're probably not gonna get a request. And then if you do, it's like five miles back in the other direction and 15 minutes because you were going 70 in this direction. So I don't really want those rides anyway. So the destination filter never really did me that much favors. I will say that um, sometimes you do get lucky with it and you'll get a ride to exactly where you're trying to go. But knowing the exact destination like we do now with this feature um, just gives you a lot more control of uh, exactly where you want to get to. So not only, you know, maybe you want to get to a specific place at the end of the night, like I was describing, but say um, you're in one area and you see that there's a strong surge or you know you're expecting a strong demand in another area of town, then you can be looking for rides going to that area and going in that direction. And you can really drive a lot more strategically in that way. And if you know your passenger's destination, you can also really take advantage of things like surge pricing and also incentives like quest bonuses and consecutive ride bonuses. And those things are only offered in certain markets, usually larger markets like Los Angeles and San Francisco. But just to give you a little bit of background, a quest bonus will generally be a certain dollar amount bonus for completing a specific number of trips, either during the week or over the course of a weekend. For example, I'll often receive a quest bonus offer of something like uh, a $30 bonus for completing 20 trips over the course of a weekend. Um, and then consecutive ride bonuses are something where Uber encourages drivers to go to a specific area on the map where they expect high demand. And then you need to begin your first ride in that area at a specific time. And then you have to actually um, accept whatever next two rides you get after that, no matter where you are or um, where the pickup is. In, and then you have to complete those rides in order to unlock the bonus. Here in LA, those bonuses are only offered during certain times and they'll generally, generally be between you know six and as high as $16 or so. And because the surge is just a flat rate added to a trip, you know, knowing the passenger's destination really allows you to take better advantage of that and it seems like the money is with short trips. You know, the thing is with surge pricing, you're really only guaranteed the surge amount that you see in the request. For example, here's a ride, it says it's a $5 surge and then between the surge and the share adjustment, I actually got, uh, about $35 right there, so that's great. Now here's another trip, and the surge amount was $6.25. And you know, I ended up actually getting $22.85 a surge, cool. But now here's a trip where the surge amount was $6.25, and you know what? I only got $6.25. And here's a trip where the surge amount was $15, and I only got $15 for it. So you're really only guaranteed the surge amount that you see in that request. So for me, if I know my passenger's destinations, I'm gonna be looking for those short rides and trying to take advantage of that. So with all that information in mind, I went out and I hit the road and I decided to go and drive in a place where I thought I could get a lot of short trips and that's the UCLA campus here in Los Angeles. And I actually went out and drove at a time that I normally would avoid during the week, which is um, a Friday afternoon into evening. I went out about 3 p.m. And that's normally you know, a time I'd avoid driving because there's so much traffic and you, know, you just end up getting stuck in traffic and it's just miserable and you probably don't earn that much either. Um, but I wanted to give it a try and it actually worked out pretty well. On that day, I was able to go out and in five hours and 35 minutes of online time, I actually completed 22 trips, which is a lot, and I got $140 in earnings, but I actually also got a couple consecutive ride bonuses, so it was more like $160 in earnings, and then on top of that, someone forgot their phone in my car and then came the next day 
uh, to meet me and pick it up. So I got another $15 for that. So it was a pretty good day in terms of earnings. What was really great was that because I was able to see my passengers' destinations, I could not only avoid traffic, but I could also accept rides to areas where I thought there was more demand or where I saw surge on the map. And I could just get to exactly where I wanted to go and I could really maximize not only the surge, but also those incentives that I mentioned. We take a look at my trips that day. I mean, you can see I was just getting one ride after another and most of them were surge as well. You know, each ride wasn't a huge payout, but I was getting so many. I mean, you can see just within an hour, my first hour there, that's six rides. That's pretty good. I was also able to cash in on some of these consecutive trip bonuses that you see here. And on those, you can really dial it in and because I could see where the uh, destination was, I, you know, I turned down some consecutive trips, but some of them I accepted and here I just got a good run and I was able to complete these. Look at that. I completed three rides in just 12 minutes. So I got not only the ride earnings, but also that consecutive trip bonus. So knowing the passenger's destination just really allows you to apply much, much more strategy to your driving because you have all this other information that you didn't have before. And I was also able to really maximize my earnings per mile. This is the Stride Mileage and Tax Tracking app. It's a totally free app that I like to use to track my miles for tax purposes. And you can actually do a lot more with it, like track all of your driving income and expenses and find savings on insurance plans. We'll leave a referral link for Stride down below. So click on that if you're looking for a great free way to track your miles and expenses. And I just really like the maps it provides. You can see exactly where you drove. I did two little shifts. I took a little uh, bathroom and snack break in the middle. Um, but here I drove 14 miles in an hour and 30 minutes. And then uh, later on, I, after my half hour break, I drove 27 miles in three hours and 13 minutes. So it's really only a total um, of about five hours. You know, I was online for five and a half hours, um, but 42 miles to earn 160 or, you know, if I take into account my uh, bonus for returning that phone, $175 um, for just driving about 42 miles. That's much, much more than I'm used to earning per mile because usually there's so many dead miles involved in earning that type of money. So when you know your passenger's destinations, you can really boost your earnings per mile. And just to give you an idea of the type of ride requests I was receiving and which ones I was accepting and which ones I might've rejected, uh, let's take a look at some. So here's a pretty good one. It's uh, four minutes away. It's a two minute ride. It looks like the passenger was only trying to go one block. Um, and it has a surge. So cool, I would definitely accept that one. You know, here's a request. Looks like it's three minutes to the pickup. Uh, it has a surge, it's a six minute ride, one mile, great. You know, and here's a ride that would totally ruin my day in the past. You go and pick up this passenger and then you find out it's a 15 mile ride that takes you almost an hour and then you end up in Topanga, which is uh, basically on a mountain and I'm not exaggerating, you'd actually be on the mountain, nowhere near another ride request. Um, so that's a no way, even though it has the 525 surge, but that's a ride I'm definitely gonna avoid. Here's a ride request I would take in a heartbeat. It's four minutes away, there's a $5.75 surge, and then the ride itself will take me seven minutes and a mile. Now here is a no thanks. You know, it is a plus $6 surge, but over an hour and only 14 miles, you don't really know if that'll pay that well and what the situation will be like where you end up. And check out this ride, you know, in the past, pool rides were the absolute worst thing ever. Well, now, if I know it's a really short pool trip, and hey, $8.25 surge for a four minute trip, that's one minute away, absolutely. So I did have pretty good success going out on that day and um, taking advantage of knowing the passenger's destinations and then combining that with a strategy to maximize short trips and surge and incentives. Um, but there are some things about this new situation that I'm not as crazy about. And you know, first of all, we still don't have any control over the rates. So if there isn't a surge or there isn't some kind of incentive offered, you know, it doesn't matter if you know the destination of the ride, it still might not be profitable. And now that drivers know which rides or at least have an idea of which rides might be profitable or not profitable, it turns out that a lot of rides just aren't profitable. There's also no guarantee that these features like knowing our passengers' destinations will even stick around or that there won't be other things that come into play later that affect our ability as drivers to take advantage of them to uh, use these features to maximize our earnings. You know, for example, after having pretty good success using 
uh, my strategy that day over at the college campus, I decided to go back out on a Monday morning when Uber was offering um, a really high consecutive ride bonus that included that area, a ride bonus of $16.50 for a three ride series. So I thought, you know what, I'll go back to UCLA, do a whole bunch of rides, I'll probably make $150 in like two hours. Well, you know what? A ton of other drivers had that same idea. And I went there and sat for over an hour. I got two ride requests. One was um, gonna take me like an hour directly into traffic. Terrible, so I declined it. And then the other one was an Uber Eats delivery that I was not in the mood to do that day. Ended up packing it in and going home. So, you know, even if I know my passenger's destinations, there's these other things that are outside of our control as drivers, like Uber offering a ridiculously high consecutive ride bonus that gets so many drivers on the road that means nobody gets any requests. It doesn't solve all our problems just to know the passenger's destination, but it's definitely really, really valuable information. And if you're watching this channel, you probably do apply some strategy to your driving. So if you do have these features or if you're getting them soon or when you get them, you know, be sure to take advantage of them because there's a lot of drivers out there that just go with the flow and just take the next ride they get no matter what. They don't really evaluate every ride request. So I think my takeaway from my experience with these new features is that things are changing and they're changing quickly and the most successful drivers will be the ones that are able to adapt quickly to the new situations. And that's really nothing new for the rideshare industry. So I'm wondering if you are one of the drivers in California who already has access to these new features and you can see your passenger's destination when you receive the request, how do you like it so far? Have you noticed a difference in your driving experience? Have you noticed a difference in your earnings? I would think so, but you know, I'm wondering what your experience has been like. And if you're a driver who doesn't yet have these features, are you excited to get them? We'd love to hear from you, so please go ahead and leave a comment below. If you haven't already, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button. We release new videos all the time here on the Rideshare Guy channel. I'm Ezra, and I'll see you next time.